Greg, Maya, and Betty are not experts, nor do they claim to be. They're just a bunch of nerds who enjoy talking about movies, shows, and current events. So sit back, grab a coffee, relax, and enjoy a brand new episode of All Queued Up. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of All Queued Up. If you're new to the show, we review shows. If you're new to this show, we review shows tied to streaming services like Netflix, Amazon, HBO Max, Disney Plus, etc. I'm your host, Greg Dietz, and with me always is Maya Don Fisher and Betty Badger. How y'all doing today? Uh, Don't everybody hmm. talk at once. Well, well I was going to let Maya go I was, first. I was going to defer to her, but I'll go. I'll go. Uh, you know, I'm doing a really good, uh, busy day today. Uh, so having an earlier start than normal, uh, got therapy today after this. So, uh, and then, you know, excited about tonight, the new Jackbox party pack, uh, seven drops and we're all going to be playing online tonight. So if you're watching this or listening to this on Friday after it publishes, where were you? We were expecting you. <laughs> this is why you need to follow us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So you can see those alerts and join in on the fun. Yep. Yeah. But that's me. Um, Benny, how are you? Better today. Um, still sore from my dental adventures, but uh, getting closer to normal than I was yesterday. So good. I'm good. That's good. That's excellent. Very good. Very good. Glad to hear. How are you doing, Greg? Um, I'm, I'm good. I Weirdly enough, because we didn't record on a normal day, um, uh, I I woke up this morning with like a headache. And I was like, oh no, I don't want a headache today. And uh, it turned out that I just slept weird and my neck was creamed. So like when I when I got up and took a took a fucking um, acetaminophen, I uh, it just like went away. <laughs> it's like thank thank the Lord I didn't have a headache today. Yeah. This shit can ruin a fucking day. <laughs> it really can, man. It ruined my day yesterday. So. Yeah. And I'm still uh, suffering the after effects, man. <laughs> um, so for anyone curious what we're going to be reviewing today, we're going to be talking about um, the boys. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, uh, Lovecraft Country, the, the penultimate episode, um, the season finale of The Boys, season two, and uh, uh, Hubie Halloween. And if we have enough time at the end of the podcast, we're going to kind of run through all of Adam Sandler's movies. And the rule on that is he has to have acted and wrote, written and acted in it. Um, if he just acted, doesn't count. If he just wrote, it doesn't count. It has to be a whole thing for him. Um, but uh, why don't we dive right into uh, Lovecraft Country, his penultimate episode. Um. It's if you're not watching Lovecraft Country, I highly recommend it personally. I know that I know that Betty does too. Yeah. Um Maya, I'm I'm more curious about your take on this episode. You did tell yeah. us that it was better, but in what Oh, it was it was absolutely better than the last week. I I just you know, you can see everything's coming building to a climax and they tightened up a little bit of the storytelling. Uh, in this episode uh, and made the last episode more meaningful in doing so. I just thought last episode it was just ho-hum. I think with the further storytelling that was added and what the prior episode built upon just made it better in hindsight. So Interesting. uh, because like I because I, again, if you if you listen to last week's podcast, like Betty and I are just talking this show up because we absolutely loved last week's episode, uh, whereas Maya did not, um, and I didn't hate, just didn't love, uh, like we did. Yeah, yeah. And, I just uh, thought it was average, you know, a little better yeah. than average, but it, for what the show had been delivering on a consistent basis, especially early on in the first three episodes. It felt like a mid-season lull, but thankfully, with the events of this episode and uh, the episode prior, 
uh, everything that had happened in these three episodes and touching base on what happened early in the season. It all seems to be building towards a nice uh, finish next week. So, um, Before we get more into the uh, review, uh, last week, I was seeing a lot of people on Twitter kind of talk about how the show didn't didn't do what they were expecting or didn't do kind of like it for them wasn't what Watchmen was, you know. And um, uh, I, f- I found that fascinating considering that I, I felt the polar opposite of that. Yeah. And, uh, um, but this week was different. A lot of those same people were just like, like, why wasn't last week's episode as good as this episode? Um, and I think one of the issues with the show is that if it doesn't tackle the racial implications like directly as hardcore, it people just tend to kind of not enjoy it as much. I can't say that's the same for you, Maya, but that's the trend that I've noticed. Because this episode was like, uh, hey, so last year with Watchmen, we taught a lot of white people about the Tulsa massacre in 1921. Why don't yeah. we just go there? <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, that was, that's the thing, part of me, hold on. Part of me, uh, when I was watching, I was looking at the runtime of the episode and it was only 54 minutes and it's like 36 minutes in and they're just arriving in Tulsa. And I was like, man, they need more time to build on this. By the end of the episode, I was like, no, they didn't need more time to build on that because showing the horrors that were occurring during the massacre and the brief time that they had the uh the scene with letty and tick's mother's family and the scene with montrose and tick with younger versions of montrose and george and tick's mother that was some pretty powerful stuff that yeah. took the exact amount of time that it needed and no more. And you still see all these horrific, horrible things going on. So yeah, I, I, was, a lot. I was very worried that they weren't going to have enough time to do the episode justice. And I am glad I was wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, Betty, you said, uh, you said you text us about how heavy that was uh, right after watching it, and you had said, uh, uh, "No more white woman tears." I know what you mean by that, but do you want to elaborate on that? Well, yeah, it's it's the I read white fragility um, when George Floyd and the protests and everything was going on. I heard about that book and I, I read it, and it's it's hard. Um, as a white person to read that, but I understand, you know, basically what, what she's saying is, you know, we don't need more white women crying, you know, about these issues because it's distracting from the issue. And that's an absolute right. truth. Yeah. You know? Almost like uh, crocodile tears in a sense. Yeah. And it's not, it's absolutely not. I cry everything. I mean, I'm a very emotional person. <laughs> I cry so much. And over the stupidest things, but I'll be like, oh my God, it's, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's like, I know now in these situations that I don't, I, I don't acknowledge my sadness, acknowledge the bad that was going on, you know? Yeah. That's, that's what needs to be done. And yeah, it was, it was hard to watch. I mean, but you, the, the story, you know, it wove itself. It was always meant to happen that way. You know, for, with- yeah, that's that I think I, I completely agree with. That was the saddest part to me was like, like I said, like we learned about a lot of people learned about Tulsa last year. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, the shit, I, I'll full on admit I had never heard of it until Watchmen talked about it. Um, and uh, but but Watchmen doesn't really go super into it. It's just a kind of a background plot point, if you will. 
Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Watchmen brought it up, but this show expanded on how horrific it was. Yeah. This episode specifically. And I'm super fucking grateful for that. Yeah. You know, and I hope that Watchmen and things like Lovecraft Country, you know, and in, inspire people to look at, at this more you know go searching for more information find out what you can and make sure that you're never part of the problem again you know because that's if you don't know about it you can't make sure that it doesn't happen again you got to make sure it doesn't happen again so go learn you know give yourself some knowledge because knowledge is power in these situations and we know better we knew better then we should have never ended up like that well, I think that's, I think a lot of people, um, uh, and I'm going to get a little political here, but not terribly, I think. Um, I think a lot of the, the all lives matter people, uh, they, they don't know about the, the horrors that, that racism has brought in just the last century. Yeah. Um, they think, uh, um, slavery wasn't the end. No, it wasn't. Yeah. That's, that's, that's exactly it. Like, I've heard actual people say, um, well, Lincoln ain't ended slavery. And I'm like, yeah, ended it. <laughs> didn't didn't change racism. Yeah. You know, and, people uh, are still racist. And that's, you know, we had Jim Crow laws that mm-hmm. were put in place because, you know, these in the South, there were a lot of small communities that were up and coming black communities. They had judges and lawyers and teachers and educators and the Jim Crow laws were meant to stamp them back down because, you know, the white people felt they were getting too uppity as they would say, you know, and it was, it's, if you know about these things, it's horrible, you know, and I'm glad that Watchmen brought the Tulsa riots to people's attention. And it's like, there's so much more that, people need to learn and they, you know, well, it's, I mean, it's there. The, if you want to learn about it, it's there, you know, yeah, at the beginning of this uh, show's run, uh, people had just learned about sundown cities or sundown towns. Like that wasn't a common fucking piece of knowledge that people had. I remember right after that episode aired, I saw a ton of people on Twitter because that's primarily where I look at um, saying like, I had never heard of a sundown town until this episode. The and, South wasn't uh, saying that. I guarantee you most oh, of the South oh, sure. was not saying that. We know all about sundown towns. I mean. Well, yeah. When I know, say looking at Twitter, I mean, like, I'm looking at a very small yeah. percentage of people watching it. But I mean, but it is. It's, uh, you know, if you if you didn't grow up here, if you didn't have family here, you know, um, you wouldn't probably know about it. But, yeah, I right. mean having I, I, generations that go back in the south yeah we know about sundown towns in my family you know we're white and so yeah. I, I think my reaction to it was uh oh my god yeah those were a thing like i knew about them i'd heard about them i'd read about them but i forgot they existed until this show brought it to my attention i was like because and i think that's the other thing that this show really kind of exemplifies is like you as a person who is who is white or of another descent that's not totally discriminated against and argues that you know things aren't as bad as they seem or whatever that's that's privilege right there that's straight mm-hmm. up privilege you being able to sit there and say oh yeah sundown towns were a thing or i didn't know they existed or i didn't realize the tulsa massacre happened is a privilege it straight up is yeah it is because and, uh, these are things that you don't have to acknowledge and face the the truth of, you know, what it means to be a white person in America for the last 400 fucking years. Yeah. You know, I mean, it. it's not like your privilege makes you a bad person. You know, I'm not a bad person because I have white female privilege because I still have, you know, it, it, privilege is a scale. Everybody's on different levels. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm I'm. I'm a white woman, but I'm not on the same scale as most white men. And most white men are always going to be on the same scale as the top 1% of white men, you know? Right. I, so, I, I saw I saw a really good analogy for privilege that I think a lot of people don't put in perspective. Um, the guy that's sitting in a wheelchair who can't get out of the wheelchair because of his disability, and you walk past him, that's a privilege. Yeah. You have the privilege of having legs. Uh, if you don't have dyslexia and you can read a book with no problem, that's a privilege. Yeah. 
Um, it's, it's the same thing for race. Um, no one, no one is telling you that you're a bad person or that you should feel bad for being white. That's not what that means. What it literally means is that, um, you, like you said, like you said, Betty, it's, it's a, it's, it's something that you have advantage of that you don't maybe know you have advantage of until it's pointed out to you and the intelligence level that you can, uh, exude from that is that you recognize that because the second that you recognize that like you can maybe take a little bit more take the proper steps into helping yeah i mean check your privilege at the door man it's acknowledge that you have this it's not saying you know you're an automatically bad human being for having this privilege it's just acknowledging the fact that you have it that some things in life are going to be easier because of you know who you were born as yeah you know i mean i can't help that i was born a white woman any more than a black woman can help she was born a black woman nobody can fucking help that right. you know but we're we're all set with these circumstances and we have to acknowledge it and especially if we want things to get better you know if we want more equality in this world, we need to start checking our own privilege at the door and saying, yeah, I have this. Why doesn't X person have this too? Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. And then, and then vote in that way. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, stand, stand and help. Like there's, there's a, anyway, um, what, what I'm I don't have, that's the thing. We don't have to give anything up to give other people equal rights. Right. And I think that's what a lot of people misunderstand is that, you know, they think that if we by giving other people equal rights, that we're somehow giving up something of ourselves and we're not. We're just making sure everybody else is on the same playing ground as we are. You know, I said I said the other day to my dad, I said, what what confuses the shit about me, uh, confuses the shit out of me about some people like um, we were kind of talking about the whole uh, taking away uh, uh, student loan month, like the, the student debt, couldn't think of the word debt and um, uh making college kind of free or more free than it is now. And uh, we have somebody, I know somebody um, that argued, no joke. Well, I had to pay for college. So they have to pay for college. That's stupid. And my, yeah. my, my reaction to them was, so your entire concept is it was hard for me. So it should be hard for everybody else. Not, I don't want anybody else to go through that. Yeah, and, I work. And, I walk ten miles to school uphill in the snow both ways. Both ways. You know? <laughs> You're gonna do it too, damn it! You know, it's like what? No, that it's makes so, no sense. <laughs> it's so I, I, saw, I saw a wonderful uh, meme this morning that actually touches on this. Uh, give me just a moment, and I will. Okay. Read it um, to you. Yeah, and no, just my my argument when people say shit like that is is. If we, if everyone thought the way that you did, we'd never make advancements in society. Right. Period. And it's like, and what higher education for your citizens is only going to improve your country. I don't understand why you wouldn't in a want it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like you know, where where you have free higher education, those countries are doing much better than America. They are, yeah, but they're so much better off than we are. You know, it's like we. We can't even get behind our fucking public schools, man. We, we right. it's insane. I know it's bad, uh, and that, that's and that's I think my point with the whole like white privilege situation is that once you recognize you have white privilege and you want people to have, you want uh, those you want black people, you want people of color to feel safe walking out on the street and not from other people, but from you know police officers. When you recognize that, and you go like, I don't want that for them then immediately um, you, you're you likely to take the proper steps as best you can to um, help with that, to make that better for them. And when you don't and you choose to actively ignore it, that's in a way a, a form of racism. I don't know if it is racist, but it definitely feels It's like racism it. by proxy. There you go. You know, I mean, if you're not doing anything to you know help the situation you're hurting the situation you can't just sit back and say oh, i'm not 
touching this, I have no opinion either way because I'm sorry, this is our country. This is our people. You know, you're either for equality or you're not. And if you're not, you're just making the situation worse. Yeah. I don't understand why you wouldn't want people to be equal. It just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I'm not saying I want to take all the rich people's money and pass it out among all the poor people. I'm just saying we need to be more fair in how we fucking tax people in this country. You know, um, I mean, I personally would like to see the rich people get taxed more just so that way we can put it to the infrastructure. But I'd also like to see politicians get paid less. So that's, that's that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's like politicians, they have health care for the rest of their lives. They don't have to worry about a lot of the same fucking issues we do right? when it comes to getting health care. Cause it's like personally, Nothing. you know, $2,000 a month for my family. That's insane. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's like I have to choose. Issue, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's yeah. So, but anyways, back to the topic at hand. It's just people. At again, I think education on these subjects when it comes to racism, and I think that media is a great way of starting these conversations. Yeah. Uh, but you know, don't end it there. You know, do your own research. Go out there and look because it's there. It's waiting for you to find it. Yeah. You know, it's not hard. And yep. all you can do is educate yourself better to the situation at hand. And that's never a bad thing. Wholeheartedly agree. Um, and to circle back towards uh, Lovecraft Country, I'm, I'm happy that shows like Lovecraft Country and Watchmen are bringing that mm -hmm. shit to attention. Um, I, I wish more shows would. I wish that I wish more video games would. I yeah. want to see people, uh, and, and I know that people are going to be like, well, don't force it. Don't shove it down my throat. Well, too fucking bad. Yeah, I'm sorry you don't like it. Shut the fuck up. You know, I mean, yeah. it's like, um, you know, Discovery, Star Trek Discovery is going to be having two main cast members who mm -hmm. are playing transgender and non-binary. And, you know, that's awesome. I think, you know, because I was speaking to somebody else about this and they were like, oh, they're going to fuck it up. And I was like, no, nah, they're not because, you know, they absolutely this show is meant to be groundbreaking. That was the whole fucking point of it. I mean, if we're being it's honest, be Star Trek was always meant to be that. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was always meant to be. So, you know, as a woman, I wouldn't want to see my, you know, gender only portrayed as aliens. Because they were like, well, you know, they've done this alien, had this, and this alien. I'm like, but they're aliens, and they're not main characters. Would you like only be portrayed as an alien? Because I know I wouldn't. You know, I mean, why are, yeah. the, you know, absolutely transgender characters are going to exist in the future. And non-binary non -binary people are going to exist in the future. Why would they not be recognized? Right. You I know? exist now. Yeah, I mean, you know, you exist now. Don't you want to see people like you being main characters in these Absolutely. types of shows? Yeah, I'm just saying white right hetero people have been represented for long enough. Yeah, I'm done with it. You know, I was like, I know what? all about white hetero culture. And let's let's do something else now. Yeah. One of the things I want to see done in comics, I want to see a major A list character. I don't care who does it come out as transgender and say i'm transitioning i want to see that that would and be fucking amazing i've heard you know the primary argument i've heard against it well that wouldn't make sense there's no precedent for it i was like and that, to those people i've come back to and said now i said did you have any suspicions of me being transgender before i came out they said no i said then why does a comic book character have to do that for you yeah. That's, that's, yeah. I've no. said a thousand and one times, and this is coming from somebody who is very, very cis. It is not our place to understand. It is our place to accept and to treat them as they want to be treated. That yeah. It's that fucking simple. You don't have to sure. understand it. You know, exactly. It, and I'm not asking anybody to understand it. I'm just like, this is me, accept me or ignore me. You know, right. I'm fine with either. But And, you know, Lovecraft Country has kind of, in a way, they're touching on a lot of topics at one time, you know, because they're not just dealing with the racism. They're also dealing with, you know, homophobia. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. And poor Montrose. That's it's that was, I remember in the 90s, that was a much bigger deal in the black communities that I was in, that I knew, you know, growing up, that, you know, there was a big discussion of black men on the down low, is what they called it, who would have sex with men but had relationships with women. You know, that that was their beard. And it's still taboo in that community to a uh, you know, certain extent. It's like when um, Eugene from the Try Guys came out as gay. Uh, he was not accepted by his family, and he knew that was how it was going to be because he's South Korean. You know, and it was just, I think we need more of this in our, you know, absolutely shove it in people's faces. I don't give a shit if they don't like it. Yeah, they need I to am. see it. I don't give a shit if you yeah. don't like it. You know, and if you're really not liking it that much, then you know what? Turn your TV off. I don't know what to tell you. Um, yeah, no, it's it's uh, if if you are watching episode nine of Lovecraft Country, and you think to yourself at any point during that, like, I'm tired of shows like this forcing me to watch atrocities like the Tulsa massacre or uh, uh, racism that existed in the, in the, in the late forties, early fifties um, in, in such a fashion or watching the episode six, I think it was um, uh, about the, the, the Korean war and uh, you aren't disgusted by the actions and um, immediately uh, appreciative that it's showing in that fashion, then First off, stop listening to our podcast. We don't want you here. Yeah. Straight up. I'm just going to say it out loud. Like, I don't fucking care. You're not welcome here. Um, but if you did see that and, and you understand the problem and you understand uh, uh, that there are ways to try to improve it, um, that those problems that exist in the show haven't gone away entirely, mm -mm. Um, then... I'm I'm happy that you're here. <laughs> uh, I think that it's um I know we haven't really reviewed the episode, but uh I think like Betty said, like Maya has said, let's get more entertainment that is utilizing its platform to express how shitty things have been for people of color, for people of transgender identity, for people of um, anything that's not fucking any, any maligned, any maligned group, any maligned group. Yes, uh, we want more of that. I want more of that. Um, it's it's unfathomable to me that in the year twenty twenty. I have been alive for 37 years. You two have been alive longer than me. And fuck off. <laughs> I was waiting on that. Was a bad thing. <laughs> um, We're a higher level. Just remember that, Maya. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, more experience points. That's right. Uh, I'm trying to word this as delicately as, delicately, delicately as I can. Uh, but I think it comes can, down to. Can you say delicately? 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 <laughs> delicately? I'm trying to say delicately. 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 <laughs> Jesus, Christ. There's um, one L. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm aware that there's one L. You can just yeah, turn it around and say, L I'm trying to do this in a delicate way. <laughs> the, the, the porky pig this situation. You, it rolled it off your did, tongue so did. elegantly. <laughs> it did. God damn it. Uh it just it's simple. It's fuck it's 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 absolutely simple. Like listen to the people who are suffering. Listen to the people who are going through problems and and understand that you aren't going to quote unquote understand their plight. You're not going to. It's it's your job to know that it's that it exists and to take the appropriate steps. And that's what fucking Lovecraft Country is trying to do on top of telling you a fun story. Yeah. Um, it's done that, what, four or five fucking times this whole season. Yeah. 
So, at least. And now, my it, question my question for you before we end the discussion on this, because, again, limited time today. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> do you guys think that the last episode is going to deal with racial stuff, or is it just going to finish the story that we've been told so far? It's going to do both. And I yeah. think it'll do both. Uh, I'm hoping that it will do both in a strong way. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that it will. All right. Yeah. I think that, you know, this whole entire season, they have managed to balance throughout all the episodes, you know, the story and the story behind the story, you know, and you can't have the last episode without including the story behind the story. You know, it's going to be there. We'll, I think we'll probably also see GI in some way, form or fashion too. I hope so. Because because she was missing this episode. <laughs> she was definitely missing. You know, the only, last time we saw her, Tex saw her, said, get the fuck out of here. She apparently got the fuck out of there, but we don't know what happened to her after. Yeah, and she's after still around somewhere. The backstory between them, there is definitely something unresolved that needs to be resolved. Mm-hmm. Will it? Will it result in his demise? Possibly. What if she is solely responsible for his demise? Even though um, she's warning him to try to prevent it. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to forego any any rating this week for this show because it is the second to last, and we're just going to review the whole se- series, uh, the whole season next week. Um, but it's safe to ah. say that. <laughs> wow, uh, I think it's safe to say that this show's great. Um, even if there's a you know an episode that might not tickle your fancy as much as you know the other episodes or whatever, like some episodes are a hard watch. Um, it's still a really, really well done show. So, um, but uh, why don't we go ahead and move over to the boys' series finale, season finale, opposite oh, series, Jesus. Um, the way they left it, it could have been, but. Oh, I don't think you know, so. Oh, no, no. I don't think so either. But it, it, they easily could have said, all right, we're not going to do any more of the boys, and I would have been fine. I, I would have been upset. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, yeah. I, uh, I mean, I thought it was a satisfying conclusion to everything that's been going on. But, yes, I want to see more. Don't get me wrong. This show is cracked to me. But <laughs> let's just call it what it was, a very satisfactory hit of crack rock. <laughs> Not that I know yeah. anything what that's like. <laughs> I'm just I love saying. that you're, you're analogizing this show to fucking drugs. That he's never yeah. or that she's never done, you know. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I can't I can't compare it to crack because I've never done crack. So <laughs> I but. do call I do my dad and I do call uh, Chick Fil A crack chicken just because of the lines outside of fucking Chick Fil A. But um, uh, there must, there's got to be something in it for all those people fucking eating it. I don't, don't like Chick Fil A. I really I've never liked their food. Even Honestly, before I found only, out what they were about. I never liked their food. <laughs> I think the only time I've ever had Chick Fil A was back in 1995 when I was helping a friend move in South Carolina, and we stopped and got chicken sandwiches once. And honestly, if I don't remember it, it couldn't have been good. Yeah, I'm certainly not going to go shouting from the rooftops and say that's God's chicken. Like, so it ain't no pals. <laughs> I, I literally, I literally looked oh, up online. People that what, don't how, know about pals, I feel sorry for them. I really do because it has the. I mean, I, I mean, don't, when I, you I, do I, come back here, Greg, we are going to have to take you to pals, and you are going to oh, have to absolutely. get a double big pal with cheese, a large Frenchy fry, and a peachy tea. Because it's just the quintessential meal, man. It's and it's going to be the best food you've ever had. I, I look. Well, I, I don't. I, I, yes. I don't know if it'd be the best, but it'll be wholly satisfying. Let's put it that way. Yeah, you've never had well, a burger like a pal's burger. Boys. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just. I just. Crack. Yeah, I was going to say that the whole crack chicken thing about. Uh, uh, in regards to that, but um, yeah, this. Uh, this episode was extremely satisfying. <laughs> like, 
with the ending with the uh, Stormfront and then uh, the the uh, neutering of of Homelander. Oh yes, and you remember talking about that scene that you said. Oh yes, 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 yes. That was in there, and I was like, "Oh, there's Greg's scene." <laughs> yeah, because they talked about it. They were like, "They were like, we we," because it was supposed to be the first thing you saw in season one, the very first thing you see. And Amazon said that's too far, that's too much. And I guess <laughs> they changed their mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, considering when I that, saw that, I was like, oh my God, it's there. It's that scene. It's Greg's scene. I was like, they <laughs> threw it in there at the end. I was like, wow. <laughs> he is really feeling emasculated at this moment. <laughs> For anybody I, that doesn't know, it was Homelander hovering above the city skyline, jerking it and saying, I can do anything I want. I can do anything I want. And then just <laughs> busting a nut over the city. Yep. <laughs> How many people died? So it was I mean, I my know. buddy, my buddy that uh, uh, Maya and I play Fall Guys with, Andy, he, um, he had just watched the season finale the, the other night. And he, because I've talked about the boys and the pro, which I told you guys about numerous mm -hmm. fucking times that like he got it, he got it mixed up. And he was like, he was like, so, so does like, is this the same comic where like he shoots off a cum shot and they like, <laughs> the plane? and I said, I said, no, no, that's a different comic entirely. He's like, so, so Homelander can't shoot off, like fire off a, 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 a fire off his jizz at like a bullet speed. And I said, no, I don't think so. They never kind of addressed that. Plus, if he got a regular human woman pregnant, then he definitely can. Well, you know, what if all it takes is contact with his sperm? Well, even if it's even, if, I mean, you're you're not wrong, but I think also like if if his sperm got like if it if it hit her in any way, shape, or form, you'd see it like on her, like she'd have like a missing arm or some shit, but. <laughs> um, uh, I still don't think that they're going that route with him, regardless. Like, I think, yeah, uh, I mean, but still, it's so weird. To think maybe about. the dude with the giant fucking expendable cock that he can control. Oh, god, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus man. Bullets. Uh, so, so what, something that uh, I, I'm really excited about for season three is that uh, at the end, Mallory tells uh, Butcher, like, we're trying to put together a um a team uh, to keep an eye on superheroes. This has me extremely excited because that is the comic. Mm -hmm. That is 100% the comic. Well, um, I've heard that um, Jensen Ackles is supposed to be in season three and that his character is apparently going to make Homelander look like an infant. He's going to be a fucking bad asshole. That's so I don't know who he's playing. I'm like, if I don't either, but this is what I've heard. This is just what I'm hearing on my little uh, grapevine because uh, Heather is a huge Supernatural fan, so she, she follows anything related to them. And yeah, she's told me this, and she's very excited about it because she's been watching it too. That man, that, that one scene though. And afterwards... Did y'all wonder what she was saying um, when her, uh, Stormfront was dying? So, uh, yeah, it's funny that because uh, I've had a couple people ask me that, like, what is what is she saying? Like, do you read the comic? And I was like, I I honestly don't know. I'm just assuming a bunch of Nazi shit. Um, it was it was a bunch of German stuff, and um, she was somebody about, actually put up a translation of it yeah. online. I, I I haven't seen the translation. I only could garner little pieces of what I know of German. I was like, she's talking about her life before all of this is what oh. I was. Am I right about that? Pretty much. Let me yeah. see if I can find it. The exact translation. Because some uh, of the things she was talking about, I was just picking up on, I was like, she was talking about her life before she ever became a superhero is what I was, what my little bit of German smattering was throwing at me that's interesting i i just assumed it was like nazi rhetoric that she was just saying that she knew because her brain was not working right i think she was going back to a happier time that might be i i well, just didn't i didn't i didn't double go ahead according to this and this was translated by somebody on uh reddit 
um, she's translated to English. She says it was so beautiful how the three of us sat there in the shade of an apple tree. Do you remember the day, Frederick? Chloe had her arms stretched out the car window. We found the perfect spot by the river in the shade of an apple tree, and it was the first time that Chloe ate fresh apples. And then she said, she said, uh, I was so happy. It was wonderful. I never wanted it to end. Wow. That's what she was saying. She was talking to her husband. Yeah, again, I was picking up, you know, little words here and there. I was like, she's talking about her past. She's She was happy. She, I could pick up that much, but not much more than that. So, yeah, I was on the right track. That's that cool. makes what she said a lot fucking cooler than what I thought it was. Yeah. And, you know, in this, we got glimpses of actual humanity from Homelander. Oh, and he I doesn't think, like that. <laughs> no, but we saw it. There were yeah. actual glimpses of genuine love and humanity f- from him. Because when he saw that Ryan was freaking out in that crowd, he's like, no, I can't let this happen to my boy. I understand what he's going through. He immediately knew he was overwhelmed because it had happened to him. And he took him from there. And he's like, I'll make this better for my son. You know, I think he really genuinely had that moment of realization there. And, you know, I'm I'm interested to see how that's going to affect him going forward. I also loved the humanity displayed by Butcher in this. Yeah. 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 Did we talk about it? We talked about it, how, how how Butcher is like, he's not that far off from what Homelander is in terms of like a um, mental capacity. Uh, his like utter fucking hatred for soups, for soups in general kind of makes him, uh, uh, what's the term? Like he's the hero of the show, but he's also a complete asshole. <laughs> uh, he's yeah. the antagonist. Well, yeah, so, yeah more so. Well, well I like, mean, the, him. I think him and Homelander are both the antagonist and the protagonist in a, their own right. way. That's yeah. You know. That's more so like what I'm getting at because it was. That's what I love about these two character archetypes that they are not relatable in any way, shape, or form, but they're highly fucking fascinating. Yeah, and if you do relate to them, you have problems, and you need to seek out counseling immediately. Yeah. You know, well, you should are, not be relating are. to a lot of these people's issues because it's no, that's not normal. Well, there are some things that you can relate to, you know, that you can see. I'm not saying, you know, oh yeah, I idolize him, but when well, when what happened with first one. when when what happened with Becca happened, oh God, I felt so horrible for him because I've yeah. been there. I've been there. I know how that feels. It's absolute horror. That was just the absolute worst thing you could go through, and he witnessed it happen right in front of him. Uh, and just, oh, yeah. But yeah, man. Um, seeing him, you know, he realized, "Hey, I'll get your kid back." Tells her he'll get his kid back. Cuts the deal with Edgar uh, to give the kid to them. So he and her can go live off a happy life. And then when she begs and pleads with him, she's like, please get my son back, please. And she's like, I'm coming with you. And he has that moment. He's like, I made a deal. I was going to give him up, but I can't do that. He's like, you and him go and get to safety, get to the CIA, you know, and you think, oh, shit. He's actually putting his personal happiness aside for someone else. You know, and that's one of the most human things you can do is to yeah. put others' needs first. You know, that's a, that's that's essentially all it all it boils down to. You know, put the needs of someone else before your own, and you're a good person. Yeah, well, it was very hard for him, though. That 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 was one yeah. of the things. It was very very hard for him. And Had it not been it, for Becca, he would have never done it. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that it's going to be a long time before he shows any other signs of humanity again. He's he's probably very 
pissed at himself right now as well. So he's going to be angry and he's going to, he's going to take it out on some people around him. I, I have a feeling that's how the next season is going to be. Yeah. I hope, so, I think that's why Huey looking so much like his brother, Lenny and Huey's influence on him yeah. being around him helps soften him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keeps his mind in the right space instead of just being fucking angry. I'm, I'm excited for season three in regards to a couple things. Like I hope it takes place like a few months after. Um, and, uh, like season three opens with, you know, Billy showing back up and saying like, we have work to do or whatever. And, uh, we get a lot of that stuff from the regular, from the comic that I like, again, I've talked about it before the fucking X-Men parody, the G man. I want mm-hmm. that so fucking bad. Um, the uh, the hero gasm stuff. I know that they've expressed they want to do. So there's going to be what I'm excited about. Like you talked about Betty um, with uh, the guy from Supernatural being in the show. Um, we're going to get a lot more superheroes. Um, a lot more uh, characters that aren't of the seven. Yeah, um, I think they're going to have to start bringing in people to try and do damage control. Oh, and sure. that's where some of these new characters are probably going to come in, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know how different <clears throat> it'll be from the comic. Uh, uh, I don't know if they're going to bring in new characters to be a, a team member of the boys. Because uh, I don't think they ever did that in the comic. I could be wrong. Again, I haven't finished the comic, so I, I can't say whether or not that's the case. Um, but uh, if this is the route the show is taking, uh, Amazon, don't. Don't pull a fucking Netflix, please. Yeah. Like, the show is successful. Yeah. Well, from articles that I've been reading, The Boys is the most popular thing they've got streaming, and it's rivaling some of the network, uh, some of Netflix's most popular shows and streaming popularity. Oh, that's, so it's fantastic. So The Boys is their uh, Stranger Things. It's, it, pretty much, yes. <laughs> that's That's good news. That's great news. Um, well, let's go ahead and give a grade to uh, this the whole series, not just uh, so the whole season, not just um, the last episode. Um, final thoughts and a grade. Uh, Betty, go. I give it an A. Um, I think this season was excellent. I loved the season finale wrap up with finding out who was popping heads. That was amazing to me, uh, and I'm really looking forward to season three so definitely a from me watch it if you haven't watched it do not watch it with your children though because it will make you very uncomfortable (laughs) uh maya uh honestly this season was superb um i don't think i i think i enjoyed every episode more every week uh i just i love this show i couldn't get enough of it and it never let me down once. I, I think it was an A plus all the way through. Hi. Uh, it, it was it was uh, wholly satisfying in the best ways. Uh, and, you know, the, it made you feel there were some genuine moments of oh fucking hell, just being crushed. You know, uh, and then just moments of excitement and sheer joy. Uh, all throughout. I mean, come on. How how many times in your life are you going to be able to see a speedboat driven through a fucking whale and everybody <laughs> just laying there in the fucking guts like, okay, that just happened. And, you know, this poor whale just dying and his fucking heart slowly stopping beating next to you and whale guts dancing off your face and everything. I mean, it's a horrible thing to actually see happen in real life, but in this, it was fucking awesome. And <laughs> sorry, it just it surpassed the dolphin. That whale. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I mean, no actual animals were harmed in the making of the series, so you know it was funny to watch. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah, Peter hates us now. That's okay, um, but you know that's what I love about this series. It's so over the top, so outlandish, so just in your face with intensity it's an adrenaline rush and it's like i said it's my crack i love it 
So do so, you think the Scientologists know that they're being made fun of? Are they aware of this with the Golden Dawn shit? I don't think I mean, so. Because I, I find it amusing that they're willing to go that far. I mean, it's such an, you know, obvious I love how they, parody. I love how in this episode also they cemented that it's absolutely uh, uh, Scientology. Uh, because when, um, I think it was the deep, ma- makes a joke about how, like, they made a religion off of a book. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I thought it was, yeah, again, I think that's hilarious. If they haven't picked up on this yet, that's even more hilarious. <laughs> I would oh, yeah. love to see, you know, I would love to I, see what a Scientologist thinks about that. <laughs> I genuinely think it's too subtle um, because uh, I haven't seen anybody fucking talk about it online. Because nobody soul. wants to talk about it. <laughs> nobody wants Scientologists <laughs> coming after their ass. I ain't a word about it. I ain't fucking. I ain't like, scared y'all shit. go ahead and come after me. I don't answer the phone if I don't know your number. So <laughs> unless it says Jason Momoa, I'm not answering the phone. <laughs> Is he a Scientologist? No, but he's good looking. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, he me there for a second. I was like, I lose respect for a celebrity when they're a Scientologist. Right. So I was like, don't tell me that. <laughs> right. I feel you. Because other than Aquaman, I think he's great. Um. Yeah. So I'm bad. sorry. I loved Aquaman. Oh, it was so bad. I forgot. Sorry, I watched it. <laughs> I just go off no, of that, my uh, Aquaman the, the... was great. He as Aquaman, <laughs> not so much, but the <laughs> premise behind the movie. Wonderful. I loved it. There's a there's a friend of ours who disliked his his portrayal of him in uh, Justice League so much that when we're online and we're doing something, I'll just go, my man. And he's like, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, oh, often, but it's really funny. Yeah, see, I think Patrick Wilson, who played Ocean Master, his half brother, would have been the perfect Aquaman. Although he was an even better fucking Ocean Master, so you know. Anyway. Yeah. Well, Greg, what, you what is your? A hundred percent A plus. Uh, I, I first off, I love superheroes. Um, I watch uh, uh, anything Marvel or DC that comes out. And then on top of that, I love the dissection and dismantling of superheroes um, to the extent that I think that like things like Watchmen and um, the boys are are utterly fantastic. I I can't, um, I can't get enough of the show. And, and I know that they, the, the director just put on Twitter last night that um, they're going to start filming in uh, spring of 2021 for season three because he just finished and finalized the script for episode one oh, uh, nice. of season three specifically but uh uh yeah i'm uh, like i i'm i'm extremely happy that uh one of my favorite comic book writers garth ennis is getting fucking stellar adaptations of his comics in the past couple years Mm-hmm. With with creature and now boys, like I'm I'm so mm-hmm. fucking happy with it, and I I can't wait to see if people pick up his other stuff. Um, the the boys has been a a fucking shining light, and I'm so fucking happy I get to share with my folks. Uh, the fact that my mom's like she doesn't like superhero stuff that much, like she liked the MCU to an extent, but not enough to remember like certain movies. Um. Which, you know, I told her, I was like, you know, I don't care. As long as you remember, like, the last movie that matters and the characters. That's all I care about. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what they pull from the comic. I want to finish the comic. Like, I'm, I'm just got to find the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I love superheroes and... I don't care in what form. <laughs> I just don't like. It's just it always seems to be fun. Always seems to be good. I'm not disappointed in any way, shape, or form by this season. I think it's the first time in a long time that I've watched a show and actually legitimately cheered. And that was the scene where um, Mav, uh, Starlight, and uh, Kimiko were just beating the shit out of Stormfront. Right. Oh my god! Love I that. That so Such much. Such a chick fight. I was I like, oh, see- it's like being in high school again. <laughs> 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 I did see a funny uh, tweet that was uh, it showed the picture of those three and it was like I love this reboot of Powerpuff Girls <laughs> it's like that's fantastic well if Powerpuff uh, Girls had been that to begin with I would have been watching dude I, I, I cannot stress this enough people people usually turn off Powerpuff Girls because 
of that fashion. But the original show was actually really brilliant in that it had that juxtaposition between the the lighthearted pastelness of the girls themselves. But then when they fight villains, it's super fucking graphic and gory. Oh, yeah. Like, that's what my favorite fucking thing about it was, was like Mojo Jojo's doing something and then they punch him and you see teeth and blood. And I'm like, that's that's fucking hell. Or they punch through a monster and there's just guts. And I'm like, oh, that's so funny. But you know, um, a lot of the the shows from that time that are cartoons and stuff, they were made for kids, but they were also made so that the adults watching them didn't lose their fucking minds. True. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's I love a lot of the shows that I watched with my kid when she was a tiny kid because, you know, again, they have those those little under jokes that kids aren't going to get, but you do. Yeah. Oh, this is why I'm very skeptical on the CW live action show that they're doing where they're, yeah. t- they're like they're 20 somethings and they're ang- like, they're super fucking like upset that their life is this way. It's like, I just, that's not, but that look is... what they've done with Riverdale and what's the other uh, yeah. one. You know, I'm like, you know, they've totally taken these, stuff we read as kids that were just not that adult and woo ran away with it you know i mean well, see, it's, yeah, it's got see, a little cray cray i have to give cw credit in this regard they know their audience they know their audience they definitely is, is, do because those teenage girls and they they cater to that and and i can't fault them for that but like powerpuff girls was one of my favorite cartoons in the early 2000s and I'm just not excited about seeing it be something different in that regard. Like if they're 20 somethings and it's still got a slight like pastelness to it, to where they, uh, um, it's still got that gory aspect after like the, 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 I don't know. It's just, I really enjoyed that juxtaposition. And if that, if that's not there, like what's the point, you know? So basically, you want a Powerpuff Girls that's like Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Uh, wouldn't go that far. <laughs> wouldn't go that far. Like, I, I, I get that if you made them 20-somethings, that Bubbles would would probably still be a, like a teeny bopper, if you will. Um, but uh, uh, Blossom would be, um, you know, she'd be the, the, the valedictorian at the high school, and then buttercup would be the the goth one the the angsty one yeah that's how i saw them as teenagers or young 20 somethings this show was making them all three like buttercup okay yeah that's why i'm like oh that's kind of hmm. ruining the whole character backstory but all right i mean i hope i'm wrong and the fucking the the like well i hope that i should say i should clarify i hope that the um description that i read was wrong and it will be like that but i'll give it a shot but man that description did not excite me i'll tell you no that. that's my point i love superheroes to that extent like i'll still check out this show uh, but like uh, the other cw superhero shows like lose my interest pretty quickly um i'll give them credit arrow and flash were really well done um supergirl uh, to a lesser extent but not not bad um but uh that's my point about the boys. Like I love it because of superheroes. And then I continue to love it further than that because of how it tells the story. Yeah, it does tell a good story. And you, you guys both gave it an A plus and I would have to say that I would give it an A plus except for those gratuitous sex scenes. (laughs) Y'all I'm just asking, can we, can we just cut down on that? I mean, if if, filler is filler, come on, man. I mean, (laughs) Well, they were feeling her. That's oh. Definitely. <laughs> I was going to make Lots that joke, that. and I thought, eh. <laughs> and I think I'm... that the, I, I will say, I think that the sex scenes are, are, are added into the show simply because uh, they, um, they want to keep its adultness as high as it can go. So why not have yeah, se- they... sex scenes in one episode? <laughs> yeah, they're definitely keeping it up there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you guys have not watched The Boys, I cannot. Well, I don't think the three of us can recommend it more. Um, it's it's easily one of the best I shows that Amazon go watch has. The fucking Boys, go watch it now. Yeah, go watch it. Yeah, come back and listen to us. 
and then watch the boys some more, and then listen to us some more. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the final uh, show of this uh, review session. Uh, Netflix's original uh, Adam Sandler movie, Hubie Halloween. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you should have got high first man i don't know what to tell you uh, i mean so well, i don't i don't do that so i know but you really should have <laughs> this was bad this was worse than little nikki bad I don't agree with that, but I do. <laughs> uh, well, you I, said it, so yeah, you agree with it. I, it was a family production, okay? His wife was in it, and his two daughters. I know, uh, and then his best friend Ellen Covert's kids were in it, and Covert himself. There was a was bunch of people on the in it. Telephone. I mean, you know, Ben Stiller. I think the Ben Stiller cameo at the very beginning is how the orderly from Happy Gilmore was probably the best part of the movie. Uh, it just and it was so, weak sauce. <laughs> so I I, t- I told Maya this last night. I actually hated that scene. Um, <laughs> now there's a reason why. It has nothing to do with Ben Stiller or anything like that. I hate needless nostalgia. Absolutely hate it. And that's all this was. Him being in there was like remember this character and i'm like i yeah I, what the f- why i don't care like i hate that shit and i always will hate that shit um but uh uh that was far from the most egregious thing to me in the in the show um because that was short that was like a what less than a minute <laughs> of the film yeah um my dislike of this movie was that the jokes all seemed very mid 90s style humor like adam sandler hasn't upped his game when it comes to writing comedy at all i don't know if he doesn't Go ahead. Uh, before you before you i just wanted to touch on that um thing you disliked about the nostalgia for nostalgia's sake if that that's what doesn't make sense um because ben stiller playing that character established him as the same character from uh, Happy Gilmore. Well, the problem is his love interest in Happy Gilmore, Virginia Bennett, was played by the same woman who played his love interest in this. Uh Uh-huh. So it's just like, oh, come on now. Oh, she was in one of his other more recent movies, too. Um, I can't remember which one, though, because I made note to Jeff that she was also in Happy Gilmore and she was uh, one of the stars on Modern Family and that's gone now. So she's free to do what she's doing. And I, yeah, I agree. It was a lot of nineties humor and it was a lot of throwback, but I guess I like it because I did enjoy, you know, all the, you know, I mean, the cast was just brilliant. There were so many people in there. It's like, oh, yeah, yay, you, you know? I mean, it was just, yeah, it was a nostalgia piece for me, and I enjoyed it. I liked it. I'm, But I'm also someone who enjoys Mel Brooks films, so, I mean, well, I, I absolutely and he's got right. very much that kind of humor, so... I don't necessarily agree with you on that. I think... Well, it's it's a little more, you know updated or i would say 90sified you know but so we, i i do count him kind of in the same vein of that kind of humor because he does do throwback to characters a lot and i i enjoy it when that happens i think it's cute and i love little nikki so you can fuck off <laughs> um we'll get to that in a little bit here uh cuz it's going to be an interesting conversation uh, <laughs> uh my my biggest again, and I, we've talked about this in regards to me having like a um, a comedy. Uh, uh, what's it, what'd you call it, Betty? Snobbery. Snobbery. Thank you. I really, really, really am not a fan of new movies or new TV shows doing comedy that I've seen many times before. Um, if I go watch Spaceballs. I'm going to laugh at it because I know when it was made. 
But if I watch a movie now that has the same comedy as Spaceballs, I'm probably going to dislike it. And that's what this was to me. This was a movie that would have been made around the same time as Little Nicky, but today. <laughs> and I've seen all those jokes. I've seen all that kind of comedy. Um, and it, like, if you're somebody like Maya, it probably wasn't funny then, but it was funny to me then. <laughs> and I don't want to see another movie like Little Nicky. I don't want to see another movie like Billy Madison or, or Happy Gilmore. I want to see something new. I want to see something different. This wasn't it. Uh, having Ray Liotta say things like, gosh darn it, and, uh, you know, dumb little nicknames like he's a high school bully, or not even high school, like grade school bully. I was like, this is, this isn't funny. This is just kind of cringy. <laughs> it's just kind of cringy. Uh, the whole scene with um, Shaq, I know what they were going for. I know they were going for that whole, like, it's intentionally cringy. It's, it's meant to make you go, Oh man, that's funny because he's like a big dude and it's like, ha ha ha. To me, it was the same shit I did in high school making videos. <laughs> this, this was I want to see that these videos, of, Greg. Oh, they're gone. I don't know if I ever told you, but a lot of those videos that I've talked about, they were all on this laptop, our friend's laptop. And then his dad found the laptop and wiped it, wiped the hard drive clean. Oh, that's awful. I do have a VHS of a lot of the jackass stuff we did, but the, the sketch stuff we did after that was on the laptop because we edited it on the laptop. But it's gone. Like that whole thing with Jeff and the whole, you know, my brother and his friend kissing the and making him mad. Thing. Yeah, that was on the laptop, so it's gone forever. Oh, no. It sucks. Yeah, it's, it's really like every time I think about it, I'm like, ah, oh, no one's ever going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, that's where my problem came in. Now, I will say this. Unlike Maya, I didn't think that it was, in a sense, this is going to sound strange, poorly written. I thought that everything I watched was completely intentional, and it was meant for parents who enjoyed Adam Sandler's past movies to watch it with their kids. Yeah, absolutely. And that, I think, is commendable. It's a Halloween movie for the family. I just couldn't stand it. <laughs> and I'll grant it that, you know, and if that was the intention, a family made Halloween movie for parents and kids, they can sit down and watch it. They completely missed the mark because none of us liked it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, again, my kid wouldn't even watch <clears throat> it with me and she's closer to 16 than 15 at this point. You know, she, yeah. And she straight up told us we have seriously bad taste in movies. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I will, I will say this when Adam Sandler was snubbed by the Academy for not getting an Oscar nomination for uncut gems, which he absolutely deserved because his acting in that movie was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, he said he would go out and make the worst movie you've ever seen. Uh, a for effort, sir. A for <laughs> fucking effort. This was one of the worst things I've ever seen you do. And I love Adam Sandler, but this was bad. Uh, you know, I, I get his intent, making a fun family comedy f with his family and his friends' families. I get that. That's all well and good. But, yeah, I could not enjoy this whatsoever. I tried. I went in with an open mind. I did not even go hmm. the first time i didn't laugh i didn't chuckle nothing was funny to me I, I, you know this is i guess my comedy snobbery coming out because it's the kind of shit that he would have done when he was doing his comedy albums and making billy madison and happy gilmore and in the late mid to late 90s and it just it just didn't come across as funny today. You know, I want something new. I want something different. And he is, uh, he can be a comedic genius and his recent stand up shows that he still got it. It's just, this oh, just didn't do it keys. for me. This just didn't do it for me. Sadly. I loved it. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I loved it. <laughs> I did. It was, I thought it was cute. I loved the little twist ending. That was adorable. And again, and to me, it was it was a it was meant to be a family movie. His family was in it. That that told me a lot right there. You know, his family's in this. 
this isn't going to be, you know, one of his regular obnoxious characters. This is going to be a more family, you know, tilted if, film. And that's what that's, it was. If that's the case, buddy, if it was not supposed to be one of his more obnoxious characters, he failed miserably at that because I found Hubie to be un unbearable at times. Oh, really? Oh, my I God. I guess yeah. I don't I know. I know a lot of people like that, so... <laughs> I mean, he was a sweetheart, but come on. I don't care how much shit you get thrown at you all your life. You're not going to be that adept at dodging everything. Hey, he had an awesome thermos. That thermos was amazing. It is Inspector Gadget thermos. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. Beyond Swiss Army thermos. That was some Inspector Gadget shit. What told me, what, what, what came across to me about that, about that uh, thermos was that the intention for Hubie, the character, is to be a long-lasting character. He's going to make another movie with Hubie because um, the the what he wants is uh, kids to like really enjoy this movie and to dress up as Hubie and have a thermos. Like that thermos was an accessory that is intended to be a toy or intended to be something for kids watching it. Um, and uh, when I watched it, I just said, "This fucking thermos is annoying." <laughs> <laughs> it was I really love that. I thought it was he adorable. Mixed chicken noodle. He makes chicken noodle and split pea soup. Look. I didn't notice that, but <laughs> <laughs> well, when he stopped, he stopped in the diner and she gave him three cups of soup. One was chicken noodle, one was split pea, and one was something else. And oh, I assumed that was him like putting it in different compartments of Yeah, that's what terms. I thought too. Uh -oh. I figured that his little Doctor Who thermos definitely must have internal pockets for each one of these soups. Because <laughs> it has a, it, I mean, what, how many fucking things could it have done? Because it, it was like a grappling hook, it was a flare gun, it was, it was like well, that's the whole point. Line, it couldn't it do all those code. things. Yeah, I think that that's what made it funny is it couldn't do all those things. It was like a little Doctor Who thermos. It must be bigger on the inside. <laughs> I mean, well, it's hard as thermos. That, that's basically what I, why I'm saying that was because uh, it um, because it could do all those things. Uh, it him putting three different soups in three different compartments of it made sense. Yeah, I just viewed it all as going in the same hole, and <laughs> getting mixed around. Yeah, same hole, <laughs> and uh, you know, getting mixed oh. around into one ugly conglomerate of you. <laughs> it was a sweet little story i mean again i i get if you didn't like it but i hate kevin james uh I he just was the least him i do not find him funny at all he was the least uh uh obnoxious character to me and now that he is like one of adam sandler's best friends the only movie that i ever liked him in well, actually i'll take it back i like two movies he's done with sandler i liked uh grown-ups the first one uh, the second one was bad. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, I now pronounced Chuck and Larry. I thought that was actually funny. Yeah, that was funny. So that's not uh, on the list. He didn't write that. Uh, no. But yeah, most of the times Kevin James, I'm just not a big fan of. So I had a really hard time with. I agree with you there. I'm not. I'm not top of the list with Kevin James. I didn't uh, like his series. I enjoyed uh, Keenan, Keenan in there, uh, you know, as the the desk cop. You know, he was funny. Yeah. But there's a few oh, roles in this that I thought to myself, "Why did you say yes?" Like Steve <laughs> Buscemi, nothing going on. Is that why not? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I guess they owed him a favor. I don't know. <laughs> It's like, oh, we're doing this? Really? Fuck, I shouldn't have made that deal. Right. I, I get it. it but, it's, it's a lot of like a lot of the people that were in this are are friends of Adam Sandler. Like that's why they agreed to it. That's why they said yes. They they heard he was making a family movie and they were like, it's just this silly, stupid little thing. Like, let's have some fun with it. Yeah. Um I mean, it's no different really than, you know, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck doing a bit for Kevin Smith when he right. did the movie. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, so if y'all had to grade it overall, what would you grade it? I'd give it a D because uh, just strictly because I didn't think it was good. 
I thought it was below what his average films are. But no, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It's just one of the worst things I've ever seen Sandler do. Uh, he's just capable of better. I mean, and you I haven't seen better. <laughs> what? Yeah. I was going to say there was that movie with, uh, I can't remember the name of it for some reason, but it was the one where the video games come to life because of aliens. I never watched that one. It's yeah. bad. It's really bad. It's not, he didn't write it. He just acted in it, but it's fucking terrible. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Greg, what would you rate it? Uh, D plus. I think that there's a lot of charming moments in it, like you said, um, which is why it doesn't, you know, get a super low grade. Um, I, I wrestled between a C minus and a D plus for this because it is clearly a family film. You watch this with your kids, they're going to fucking love it. They're going to absolutely love it. Little um, kids, don't try it with teenagers. They're not going to no. enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that, uh, uh, again, and, and this is uh, my comedy snobbery, I've seen all these jokes. And if you're in the same boat as me, you're going to find it just as cringy as I did. But if you aren't bothered by that stuff, you're going to dig it. You're going to really enjoy it. It's, it's, it really is, in a, in a weird way, classic Sandler. Uh, classic family Sandler, if I'm being specific. So, um, yeah, uh, I think D plus is where I can place it. What about you, Betty? I actually have to give it a B. Um, I enjoyed it again. Jeff and I both sat here and we both found it enjoyable, very nostalgic. You know, it was cute. I mean, it was not a great Adam Sandler movie. It was not his worst movie. It, but, you know, for what it was, a cute little family thing for younger kids and for, you know, his friends and family just to get together and do something fun. It wasn't bad. I think um, when it comes to things that you've already experienced, when it comes to comedy, you are getting to a point in your life where you are going to see that uh, comedy gets recycled. Everything gets recycled in the entertainment business. You know, it's like, I know being married to Jeff, I have, you know, he's talked about this before because he's older than me. He's seen a lot more things than I have. He's been around since people had TV in their homes. You know, he's born in 62. So he's seen a lot of things. And he has mentioned to me before, you know, that something that we're watching, he's already seen, you know, because it was based off of this or that, you know, but he still enjoys it. You do go through this kind of blase period of once you start realizing that it's like, why are they redoing that again? You know, we just did that. It's like people have already forgotten. Are you kidding me? You know, I, is I that where the, we are? <laughs> I think the difference. I think the difference for me is that if you take a trope that has been done before, and you don't expand or improve upon it, that's my problem. And that's what Hubie Halloween is for me. It's not an expansion on anything. He just did the same thing. Yeah. It felt like an old SNL skit that went on way too long. Or an old SNL skit that was okay that got turned into a movie. Yeah. <laughs> I get it that. Passed. I absolutely get that. Uh, you know, I'm just saying that, you know, you are going to start finding and it means like, I know that I have already found things that I'm like, we just did that. Why are we doing this again? Why are we, haven't I seen this before? I've seen these jokes, but it's, it's recycled, you know, and it, it is pretty bad when you are recycling yourself. You know, it's one thing if you're recycling something that somebody else did, you know, 30 years ago versus because you what you did. Years ago. Well, exactly. like, let's take, let's take a uh, modern family, for example, like, sitcoms family sitcoms have been done and done and done and done but that show did something different with it you know it kind of added a new taste to that sitcom dynamic which is why it was so successful and good um and uh big bang theory tried to do that and then failed miserably because it went from laugh at the situational comedy and and to laugh laugh because they're nerds which is why they fucking failed but I don't know. I, again, right. it, it 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 might be as Betty said. I'm just a I'm just a snob when it comes to comedy. But I just I think I with get, this one, it's not you being just a snob. I think a lot of people are are very disenchanted with this. You know, again, Maya is obviously not as enchanted with it as I am. 
and it was just something that, you know, I think either you really liked it or you really didn't. And I liked it. It was nice 20 minutes of remembering being a teenager. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's um, let's go ahead and move on to the last thing since, again, limited time. Can't yeah. stress out enough. Um, yeah, I, I, I got time to do this. Yeah. Um, won't be able to, like, go through every movie in a long talk conversation, but. Um, I wrote down every single movie that Adam Sandler wrote and acted in. Um, it didn't have to direct it, but definitely had to have written it and then acted in it. And I and I did that specifically because I feel a writer has a lot more uh, say in the character. So when he's acting in it, <laughs> it has like um he's playing the character he wrote straight up. Like no offense or buts, even if the director like does says something different. So. Um, and it's actually quite a bit of movies, quite a bit. Uh, so we'll just go down chronologically uh, from his first to his to to uh, the one before Hubie Halloween, since we just gave that one a grade. Uh, we'll start with uh, Billy Madison. I really enjoy Billy Madison. I can still watch it to this day. If it were brand new, probably wouldn't enjoy it. But back then, I remember laughing my ass off. It's a solid fucking comedy. I think it's it mm -hmm. to me it's 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 a, it's a really enjoyable film because um it feels genuine. Not that other films of his aren't genuine, just <laughs> it feels more genuine. Like he put a lot of love into it. It was like his first he movie called, he was like he, he called the shit poop. <laughs> Jesus. Well, Billy Madison also has the great speech by the the other debate guy who was like, "That is possible." I award you no points, and we are all dumber for having listened to it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Betty, what about you on on Billy Madison? I like Billy Madison. I mean, it, I don't consider it one of his better films. Um, it's it's a good one, but I'm not like we, we watched it a couple of years ago when we were in Gatlinburg and it was raining. So we were stuck in the hotel and it was on and it's like, Oh yeah, I remember this, you know, but it, it wasn't as funny then as it was back then, I guess. Fair enough. Um, all right. The next one on the list is happy Gilmore. Uh, Which... fucking love happy Gilmore. Yeah. It was my first, uh, my first time in the movie. Oh really? I don't think I ever get tired of Happy Gilmore. I can watch it anytime. Uh, it's probably my, one of my top two Sandler movies that he wrote and acted in. I think it's his best movie of all time, personally. Um, I like Happy yeah. Gilmore. I wouldn't say it's his best of all time, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm I'm not actually familiar with what he wrote and starred in versus what he just starred in, you know, or just yeah. wrote. So like, I, I can I'm see very the whole curious to see where this list is going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the IMDB list and, you know, there's, there's another one that I enjoy on about the same level as uh, happy Gilmore, but okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Uh, the next one is uh water boy. I, I love water, water boy. boy. I loved it. Yeah. I remember going and seeing it in Tinseltown in the theater. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was... Exit 7. And living around here, you know, I mean, it was so funny. Because a lot of the people in that movie remind you of people you know. I know. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, I had it's a, friend. a movie about home. <laughs> I had a friend who, when that movie came out, he had the biggest fucking crush on Feruza Balk. Oh and God! I still do. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, Vicky Valancourt. She showed me her boobies, and I liked them too. <laughs> <laughs> that was his first, I think, big role where he didn't play like a relatively normal guy. Like he was, he had that, he had a, he had a speech impediment or whatever. Like, kind of like Hubie. Uh, that's yeah. why I think they were related because, I, you know. They both sound the same. I'm like, maybe they're cousins. Uh, he was in an interview recently talking about uh, the potential of um, a Sandler verse series of films. So, which makes well, sense you know, considering O'Doyle is in, uh, yeah, this movie. So, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. I I think with um, 
Water Boy, I, I don't know. There's something about that movie that I absolutely loved. You know, I'd seen That's the underdog tale. Yeah, I guess, you know, I could see that, yeah. Yeah, that's I think that's the thing about Waterboy that uh, it really drives it home is that he is mentally disabled. Like he just is. And uh but he is the hero of the film and it's heartwarming at the end, even though if it's silly. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was mentally disabled. I think he was just southern. <laughs> <laughs> my only argument against he was, that, he, was, he was a very show movie. movie. I mean, well, he was like a homeschooled also, southern look, kid. Out he the was swamp. a homeschooled. He was a homeschooled swamp boy whose best friend was a jackass named Steve. I mean, you know, again, I he didn't, didn't think have he, any friends, so he didn't know any better. Yeah, um, I don't think he was mentally disabled at all. I think he was just southern. He just came from bad stock. Yeah, it just mm-hmm. never even it never even dawned on me to think of him as that way. <laughs> that just whew, my mind. Wow. <laughs> now, it's it's funny you say that because again, like he like nobody else acts like him in the movie. That's why I put it that he was disabled, not because I'm like, yeah, this is just how southern people are. <laughs> but you yeah, guys come well, southern, like, nope. <laughs> there are All some right. people in the hollers, you know. We, yeah, they exist, and they're not they're not mentally disabled. They're just a different kind of people. They're very unique unto themselves. I got you. I just, as, as you had never thought of him disabled, I just never thought of him as just Southern. That's the, And it's so weird. Yeah, that, I just, wow. That's fucking we hilarious. We now both have new ways of looking at this movie. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, Big Daddy. Fucking adore Big Daddy. Yes. Yeah. I was a little tearjerker. Yeah, absolutely love it. Uh, Funny as shit and heartwarming as hell, too. And, you know, hey, Joey Lauren Adams just did not get enough work in the fucking movies. I'm sorry. I used to have a big crush on her, too. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I, I still quote a line from the movie uh, when um, the kid is trying to spell and uh, Ralph Steve, Schreier, damn you! Not that one, not that one, but no, it's the one where uh, uh, you give him on the easy ones. Yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> hip hip hop hip hop hip hop anonymous. <laughs> Fucking hilarious! I quote a lot from that movie from time to time, actually. And you know that was. Uh, and and that was one that had, you know, his best friend, Alan Covert, was in it as one of the lawyers. Yeah. Which, you know, uh, he was also his caddy and happy Gilmore. And, uh-huh. You know, uh, went ahead and gave him his mo- own movie, Grandma's Boy. <laughs> God, I that one. What? Wait, what? Oh, okay. We're, no, what, Nick, we don't have time to go into why you think Grandma's Boy is bad. I said, God, I love Grandma's Boy. Oh, my God. I did not hear that. You cut out slightly, and I thought you said, that's a god-awful movie. (laughs) God-awfully hilarious. You're about to get defensive. (laughs) Oh, my God. I think that's one of the best, like, comedies of all time. And I was like, what? Um, I I love Big Daddy. Uh, It's it's a great, great version, uh, great film that he did, you know, all around. And probably the last really great one. We'll uh, we'll get into that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, Betty, you said uh, you liked it a lot. Oh yeah, I thought it was really cute. You know, again, I thought I thought it was a tearjerker. I just you know, but again, a lot of things are tearjerkers for me. So <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> thought that was a cute movie. I, it's not one that really stands out in my mind, but it's one that I did enjoy. Yeah, but um, Waterboy is is probably above that on my list. Okay. Uh, the next one is Little Nicky. <sighs> Little Nicky. Little Nicky was awesome. Um, I was at the right age. That bad. <laughs> I don't agree with you at all, <laughs> Maya. I I I think that that movie is is funny. I don't know if it's still funny today. Genuinely, I haven't watched it in a long time, and I can't say whether or not it's still funny today. But then I loved it enough to where I bought the soundtrack. Like, I've watched it multiple times. Little Nicky turned me off of Sandler for a good couple of years. 
Interesting. Mm. No, right. where? Uh, well, I, again, I think where the comedy lies in that is its silliness and its over the topness. I think uh, one of my favorite jokes in the very beginning is is uh, Satan, you know, having a scheduled pineapple up Hitler's ass. Um, is a great joke. And whenever I see that same kind of joke in another movie or, or something else, I, I don't find it as funny at all. Um, so that's just, I don't know. Well, I thought it was funny because it was a, it poked fun at religion for one yeah. thing. It was, you know, and his character was so cute and so sweet to be the son of the devil. And then to find out he had an angel mom and the snoring dog, demon dog. I mean, there's just, I don't know. I also, love that movie. Wasn't that, wasn't that his uh, pet bulldog meatball? Yeah. And it snored like a demon out of hell and it scared the shit out of his roommate. And I have to say, it still holds up for me today because we do watch this almost once a year. <laughs> I, That's I can't one of our see, favorites. Yeah, I haven't seen it in so fucking long. I I haven't know. watched it since two thousand ish, like when it first came out on video. You didn't even see it in theater, huh? No. All right. I didn't so, see it in theaters either, but it's one that we have. So, yeah. Now, I, I, up to this point, up to that point, I had seen all of his movies in the theater. And Little Nicky, I saw the trailer for it. I was like, nope. Interesting. <laughs> I, I was just at this point. I was just uh, I was I was a fan of Sandler. I just didn't like. I listened to his albums. I didn't care. Like, you could just say Adam Sandler wrote it on TV, and I'd, I'd have been there straight up. Yeah. At this point. Um, the next one on the list is Eight Crazy Nights, which I love. I fucking I've never love seen it. it. Oh really? It's a good one. It's 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 a lot it's a lot better than you think, Maya, because it's not his typical fare. Like yeah. because it's a an animated movie and it gets away with a lot more, I feel like it's and it's very heartwarming in, in regards to like growing up Jewish in a very uh, uh Christian area. So mm. that's why I like it. I mean, there's a few things in there that are kind of annoying. Like there was, I, there's a character that is related to him that I did. I was, I still to this day, I'm like, that was a really weird idea for a character, but. Well, and <clears throat> I, yeah, I like Adam Sandler's um, music as well. Uh, there was a time where I played the shit out of that. Uh, the one album he's got with lunch lady land on it. Yeah. Oh, they're all. Yeah. Going after you. Yeah. Yeah. I played the shit out of that album for a hot minute. So doesn't that have also the the the, the fat guy that like wheezes when he walks? Fatty McGee. Here Fatty is. McGee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it's Fatty McGee. Yeah, man. He had some great comedy albums. I genuinely recommend like I know you didn't like Little Nicky, but I would recommend Crazy Crazy Nights. I it's not like okay. Little Nicky. I put it more in line with the heartwarmingness of Big Daddy and the silliness of Happy Gilmore. Yeah. It was his homage to, you know, being Jewish. It was nice to see. Yeah. I'll, I'll check it out sometime. Um, the next one on the list is Don't Mess with the Zohan. Never seen it. Uh, this is just. It was this, weird. This is bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, not good. I'm trying to be nice here. Yeah, it it was weirdly bad. <laughs> so funny funny thing is this movie came out in the same summer as um uh Michael Myers uh like a guru guy character that he did. Oh yeah. Um cuz I remember Love like it was like, it was like in the same month I feel like. Also didn't see it. Love Guru, thank you. Um they're both really awful movies that have a very like similar concept of a foreign character in the United States who doesn't quite get like a fish out of water story. Um, and they just don't work. They just don't work. I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't say that either movie is annoying. It's just. They're highly forgettable. Highly fucking forgettable. Like it's like, I, I don't, if you haven't seen don't miss the Zohan, I don't recommend it today. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something you need to see. 
Uh, the next one on the list is Grown Ups. I, I really like grown like, ups. I really like the first Grown Ups. Uh, I thought it was a nice family movie, and you know about <clears throat> friends, you know, mm-hmm. dealing with uh, just the whole premise behind it. I enjoyed it a lot. I personally don't think it's executed very well. I think it could have been better. Um, there's a, there's a lot of great moments in it that I think are really funny, like the whole chocolate wasted thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, I think that there's just like there's a lot of slapstickiness that just doesn't fit, like Kevin James smacking a fucking branch. Uh, and see, I think that's a lot of Kevin James's input, the slapstickiness in that. It just didn't fit the motif of the film. Like it was like I'm not watching fucking Tommy Boy here. I'm watching a family film about a bunch of guys trying to deal with the fact that they're older, which yeah. is what it should have been. And it was just like I love oh. David Spade in that movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I think, I think with Grown Ups and a lot of the SNL movies that were coming out around that time, a lot of them didn't have a grasp on how to expand out outside of the, you know, uh, skit. Yeah. It it just so it didn't work out well for a lot of them. You know, I mean, but. I mean, Grown Ups, I like Grown Ups. I mean, it's, again, not top on my list by any means, but it's no. it's okay. I would I would probably put it in my top five Sandler films, though. If it, if it if I was bored and it was just on TV, I'd probably watch it. Yeah, um, I could say that if I was bored and there was nothing better on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'm not going out of my way to watch it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next one on the list is uh, arguably his worst film of all time. It actually has, I believe it has his lowest uh, Rotten Tomatoes rating. Uh, Jack and Jill. Didn't watch it. I thought Jack and Jill was fucking hilarious. I, I know it got <laughs> bad reviews, but actually Heather feels the same way as I do. It was hilarious. We both enjoyed it. We thought it was funny as shit. Him playing a girl. Oh, my God. It was great. He did such a good job at it. I was really impressed. I was like, you know, he wouldn't make a, a you know, he, he would be a pretty woman. But he did. I think he did the characters really well. And I don't I, I don't know if there's something deeper behind people not liking it. But I thought it was cute. Heather thought it was cute. We thought that it got pretty um, shitty reviews for the cute that it was. Uh, I'm 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 going to say that to me this movie fell into the same category as um what the nutty professor was which then turned into its own franchise of one guy playing multiple roles that I just didn't think were very funny. Um I know that this is like Eddie Murphy's shtick but uh Adam Sandler doing it just did not do anything for me and I think after watching it, I I kind of I kind of thought to myself like this: Adam Sandler's never going to be able to do comedy again if this is what he keeps doing. <laughs> Genuinely, like I I I I found it droll and not really like how you and 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 I think you said Heather. My brain, yeah, is Heather, it's really stupid. Uh, I think how you and Heather saw it is very um, wholesome. Whereas how I saw it was the polar opposite. I saw it as just obnoxious and kind of boring. Um, I think that's my problem with this movie is it's not that it's like, it's, it's not that it's not funny. It's that it's extremely fucking forgettable to me. Um, this movie is more forgettable than, than don't mess with the Zohan. Oh no, I liked it. I did. I enjoyed it. Um, it took me a few years to actually watch it because the reviews on it were just so bad. But when I finally did, I was like, this is not as bad as everybody made it out to be. (laughs) I mean, I had some serious laughing moments in there. I was like, you know, yeah, this was funny. And when Heather watched it, because I got her to watch it, she's like, I'm bored. I have nothing to watch. I was like, seriously, just give it a shot. She thought it was funny as well, you know, and I was like, yeah, you know, I don't understand the bad reviews. I, but again, I guess you either love it or you hate it. I thought it was adorable. Yeah, I thought it was one of his better movies, and I, I was kind of disappointed that people were, they didn't like it. 
I just did not like it. <laughs> I was definitely one of those people that just didn't like it. I, again, I, 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 I don't know. It was just like it, uh, all the comedy I'd seen, you know, in Nutty Professor and, uh, I think it's Meet the Something, but I can't remember the fucking family's name. It was the Clumps. Clumps, thank you, yeah. Um, and I've seen other other like jokes in that regard, and it just felt like the character he was playing of Jill was just, just a weird character that he could play versus um, you know, um his his, his the, the the male version. Or I should say Jack. Uh so it's just I don't know. It's very off putting for me, but well, you know, um, oh my God, what, what, those little, um, Kelly on YouTube. Have you ever seen Kelly on YouTube? Let's no. get some shoes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. It, I found it very much in that vein of things, you know, that, that kind of, I don't know. I enjoy that kind of comedy. I think Kelly's adorable. I love her. So, I mean, <laughs> And so Jack and Jill was not bad to me. <laughs> That's fair. Um, all right. So the next one on the list is Grown Ups 2. Didn't watch it. It was, well, basically how you felt Grown Ups was poorly executed. This was a shittily executed version of Grown Ups. It's worse. It's um, way worse. It's, it's, it's bad. That's Nick what Swardson, I heard. Nick Swardson did not add anything to that movie. He made it worse. I mean, that's, I would argue that he was the least of my, of my cons or, uh, um, complaints about the movie, but yeah. He's what sticks out the most to me. I couldn't finish it. I didn't like it. No, it's, 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 it's very, it's, it's so poorly executed in, in its attempt to rekindle the flame that grownups gave to certain people that they try absolutely way too hard and miss the mark every time. Yeah, it was nothing but 90 minutes of really bad dick and fart jokes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I didn't miss anything. <laughs> no, uh, so he has two more movies before Hubie Halloween that he uh, wrote and acted in. The, the next one is The Ridiculous Six, which is a Netflix exclusive. I turned it off about a third of the way through. I couldn't finish it. I thought I it was funny. It. I haven't seen it personally. I thought it was funny. Again, it was it very much in a kind of Mel Brooks vein of comedy. I thought, I thought it was funny. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I know. Again, I I do have a twelve year old boy's sense of humor. I am not gonna fucking lie about it. <laughs> well, I think I think sophomoric humor is is totally fucking fine. I don't think that there's anything wrong with finding dick and fart jokes hilarious. I think that. For me, and again, I haven't seen Ridiculous Six, so I can't judge it. But I, when it comes to the idea of of using that kind of comedy, um, uh, having someone just fart isn't funny. It has to be involving something. So, in a sense, uh, the scene in Blazing Saddles, where all the men are eating beans around the campfire and farting in a tune, hilarious in the eighties. <laughs> Really funny in the 80s. You try to redo that and it's not funny. Do something new with a fart. <laughs> I love this, fart. man. I love that we're having an, an intellectual conversation about fart comedy. That is just, yeah. Like, if, awesome. I'm in, if I'm in a room with people and someone farts and I laugh, it's because it was an unexpected fart in a room. Yeah. But if I'm watching it in a fucking written comedy and you're just like, Oh, the person fell and farted. That's not, where's the cleverness in that? You just, you're just asking me to laugh at a fart and I can't do that. So oh, that, I can. that's, that's my problem. <laughs> I can. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All right, more Every power little to you. fart is just, <laughs> Tee -hee -hee, you farted. Tee -hee -hee. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm that kind of person. <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right. And the last movie uh, before he made Hubie Halloween uh, is Sandy Wexler. I have I've not seen, seen that. Not seen it. I need really? to look this up. Sandy Wexler. Yeah, Sandy Wexler. Maybe I have seen it, but don't remember it. Yeah, I, don't I don't think I've seen it. No, I have not seen this. It was on his, yeah, it was on his written uh, written list, and I went to the page itself, and he, he was the star of it, so. I put it wow. On 
Yeah, I've not seen that. Um, you got very poor scores on Metacritic. I mean, that's not yeah. surprising at this point. I feel like I do honestly feel like people aren't a lot of critics are not really judging the movie after seeing it. They're putting their preconceived notions on it. Not all of them, obviously. And Kevin James I, Schwartzen in it. Oh dear. <laughs> Your favorite. I mean, Nick Schwartzen can be funny, but you know, because Grandma's boy proved right. it. But oof. I think the biggest the biggest factor for me about a comedy movie is is not just the writing. It, it, there's the, the director has a lot to do with it too, and I think that Grandma's Boy had a fucking phenomenal director. Oh, okay. oh! Apparently, this movie has Rob Schneider cameo where he plays a Middle Eastern man in full brown face. Ooh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can get behind that. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's. Well, people are calling Hubie Halloween uh, ableist. So I think that was interesting. I don't, I don't know to what extent. I just saw it kind of being said on, on Twitter. And I was like, oh, well, I know that people are going to find something about it to bitch about. But um, ableist was a new one. I was like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Because he'll be as disabled and by a person who is not disabled playing a disabled person that is in in, in a sense ableist. So I do not Ken, why do we have to go with he's mentally disabled? I mean it's He's just a doof. Yeah, he's just a he's just a simple dude. Sweet, he's sweet, simple, lovable doof. At least to his mom and Victoria Valentine. I mean, I mean I you know, I just I didn't say any of this. I'm just I'm just relating. I know. I, I get really <laughs> defensive when it comes to certain things like that. I don't know, Maya, if you do. Um sometimes I think that the disabled community goes a little too far in, you know, their cancel culture. Oh, I, um, I, I, I'll oh, agree with you there. I think that people think in general go too far. Oh yeah, yeah, general, absolutely. But being in you know, part of the disabled community. I know with my hip for the past 20 years, that has put me firmly in the disabled community. Uh, I know that my, you're now in the disabled community. Uh, it, it's the best parking spaces. So I'm not, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's one of these things where it's like, you know, y'all don't have to fight about this all. Why? I mean, again, he's, he's a simple character it doesn't mean he's mentally disabled. No. Just because he's not doing complex math problems doesn't mean that he's mentally disabled. I, I, again, I don't, I don't know. I always just kind of like in 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 Waterboy, they even kind of reference it that like his mom is like he has a form of retardation, is what she says. Oh, and yeah, she loves that because that keeps him down. That keeps him home with her, you right. know? And I, I think, think him going to school actually showed that he was actually pretty intelligent. Well, as, he just as some never people, had a chance to show it. As some people have pointed out with Hubie Halloween, like, let's say he is mentally disabled. Let's just throw that out there. He's also the hero of the movie. He's also the one that that does a lot of the positive shit in the movie. He's the most positive person in the movie um gets the girl at the end becomes mayor of the of the town like yeah it's a positive outlook on a mentally disabled person well um, to me if i was going to classify him as anything or even you know water boy autistic high functioning autistic sure, and i sure. would say that as an autistic person yeah you know that that he matches that to me that's the kind of character he's playing because you know it's like uh with uh, Hubie Halloween, his thermos was amazing, and he made that himself. <laughs> I mean, dude's obviously really fucking smart. He's just he's living his life, being happy, being him. You know, well, I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give Adam Sandler credit in this regard. Like normalizing, uh, you know, mental disabilities is something that our society needs to do in regard, like regardless. Um, so to make the main character of a comedy like Hubie, you know, be the fucking hero and, and everyone, you know, people enjoying the character itself. Like that's, that's a positive thing. It just is. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, if we're shining a light onto an issue, it's, you know, again, I've had, I've had my qualms about certain issues when it comes to autism and how it's been portrayed in the media. But, I mean, you know, his characters, it doesn't bother me because I think it, you know, it, I think it gives younger kids who might fall onto the autism spectrum somebody to look up to, you know? Sure. Yeah, that, think, that guy's the, you know, he's the, the hero of the movie. I, I constantly go back to, to Overwatch when it comes to autism, that um, one of the main heroes that you get to play as has is on the spectrum. Um, but she's also created some of the best technology in the world. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, it, you know, everybody falls on the spectrum different when they're on it. It's like everybody in this house is autistic. We And we all express it differently, you know, and... It's like, you know, I call Jeff my Vulcan because that's that's how his brain thinks. You know, he's very logical and he does the mathematical stuff. And, you know, we actually enjoyed the Big Bang series. So I, I just I got mad at it. Like there was about I think it was seasons four or five. Um, there was an episode where uh, the guys are supposed to go to um, Comic-Con or whatever. And they get lost. They get like um, they go to stop in the desert to take photos in the same location. That, that one. Just- yeah, uh, I that, episode, that episode. The ending of that episode pissed me off um, because I could tell that like the joke at the end wasn't laugh at the un- the unfortunate circumstance. It was laugh at their misfortune because they're nerds. Um, and then as I continued to try to watch the show, it just became more and more that. And I was like, that's not that's not funny though. Like it's just it's just just because like they're a little weird because of that. Like doesn't really make it funny i don't understand why this is necessary um but uh prior to that i thought the show was fine um i think you know one of the reasons we liked it is because we automatically could tell you know sheldon was obviously playing an autistic ocd character sure i mean it was not hard for us and and having you know experience some of those things in our own lives you know we we could actually empathize with him as a character and i could actually empathize with you know some of the other characters and they were all assholes in their own way you know and they were all lovable in their own way and i liked how they had that that weird glue of friendship between them you would never look at these people and think that they would be a friends group but they are you know and that's that's what i got out of it and that's what i enjoyed but, you know, it, it's very, you have to be very careful when you're portraying people with autism because a lot of times people just automatically think that, you know, oh, well, they're idiot savants. And no, that's not what having autism is. You know, don't label everyone who has autism as that, you know. Right. We're all over the spectrum. We fall everywhere. We all have different tics and we all have, you know, different abilities and mine is definitely not math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, you know, we've talked about how I was diagnosed with, with ADD at a young age, but it's becoming more and more evident that I might have a form of autism based on, you know, the type of person I am and the way that I think. And, uh, you have pointed that out multiple times, buddy. And, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I was like the first time that my psychiatrist told me that, you know, I was autistic. I was like, this bitch, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, I'd already been dealing with Jeff and with Lydia, and I'm sitting here thinking, I'm the normal one. No, I'm not normal. I'm not fucking normal at all. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, this this makes a lot of sense. Okay, all right. And then it came back in my DNA. I was like, yeah, well, that confirms it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I also think that, like, when it comes to people in society in general, is that I, I don't understand. It's gonna sound weird. I don't understand the point of of making it one's personality to be autistic. Like, yeah, it are, shouldn't be. Like, it it just just live your life. Like, don't worry about so much shit. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I for the sake of Hubie Halloween, for the sake of of Waterboy, for the sake of any character that he does that's like that. Um, I don't. I I've never looked at it as a negative thing, other than maybe a negative thing for comedy. Uh. That was a joke, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, when it yeah, it just uh, and and it, that might be my my autism coming out of like how I look at comedy. 
but I've al I've always kind of been that way. Like I I, uh, I remember when I was working at Walmart and I go out of my way to find new comedies all the time. And people are like, "Why do you just watch comedies, Greg?" I'm like, "I don't know, because they make me feel good." Yeah. And yeah. I think when it comes to Hubie Halloween, if you enjoyed it, absolutely more power to you. And I don't, I don't think that anyone should take that away, even if you know Maya and I didn't like it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I understand that he was going for a fun family film for all ages, and that's fine. It just wasn't for me. And I that's, just thought it, that's cool. Oh, but I reckon we need to wrap up. Yes, yeah. I was about to. I was about to say that. Um, yeah, oh, everybody. Uh, Ninety minutes, and I still need to get ready. And Greg's got to go to work here in just yeah, a gotta, few. I, literally, as soon as we're done, I got to put on my socks and shoes, and I'm out of here. Uh, but yeah, guys, we're uh, next week. We're going to be reviewing the finale of Lovecraft Country, which I'm very excited about. Um, and uh, we're going to be reviewing all of uh, the Haunting of Bly Manor. Which I have yet not watched a single minute of so far. Oh, you really? I've oh. just been busy. I've just been legit, like super busy. Oh, like I, I, I'm going to put time aside this upcoming week to to finish to watch the whole thing. You said it's only eight episodes, right? No, it's nine. Nine. All right. Yeah, so I, I just had about nine hours of your life. Yeah, I'm not terribly worried about it. I just. I was putting it off because I was like, I got to watch this and I got to do this. And and then also on top of that, like the new season of, of Fall Guys came out. So that's been taking up a good chunk of my time, too. Um, and we are doing games tonight. Yes. Oh, yes, so, yes, yes, yes. So uh, okay. I know that this episode comes out the day after we do it and we normally do it on Saturday. But um, uh, if you want, go ahead and follow twitch.tv slash Chub Rock Geek. And that's where we'll be doing Jackbox games. Uh, the new one, the, the the seventh one, literally came out today as of recording this. Um, so we're going to be playing that tonight. Uh, hopefully you joined us. And if you didn't, where the fuck were you? And that's why I said follow us so you can see those notifications and join in the fun. Yes. Links are down below. Uh, you know, and me, I'm on Facebook. Uh, if you want to follow me, follow me there. Betty, what about you? I'm also on Facebook. It's easy to find me. Check the links down below. Uh, Chub Rock Geek on all social media platforms. Uh, mostly on Twitter is where I'm, where I'm more prominent. Uh, but yeah, guys, um, I think it's going to do us for us today. Do it for us today. Let us know in the comments what your favorite Adam Sandler movie was or what you thought of past movies that maybe we didn't like. Um, we'd love to hear from you guys. We, we, we rarely do, but I, I think maybe I'll, I'll put in the, um, the Facebook group. The uh, Adam Sandler movie list and see what everyone says is their favorite. Mm, yeah, good idea. Adam uh, Sandler, do... if you're listening, chime in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, it's funny if, we, if if I ever got to talk to the guy, I'd, I'd be fucking starstruck, <laughs> like legitimately. Oh yeah, he's genius in a lot of things. I mean, you know, what other people? Oh my god, <clears throat> or funny people? That's what funny it was. people. I funny do not people. like funny people. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> And Uncut Gems is phenomenal. I knew I still see that. <clears throat> All right. Well, All right. Let's... Um, yeah. Uh, again, guys, next week, finale of Lovecraft Country, all of Bly Manor. It's going to be a good one. I'm excited. Um, you everyone take care. No, that's not what I say. What do I say? <laughs> I say watch those shows and join us. And we'll see you next time. Yeah, we'll see you next time. There we go. There All you. right. Peace, love, and polypops. I'm out. Take care, everybody.